We will now discuss the Heber process, which is one of the applications of uh, Lee Shatler principle that we uh, study. It involves the application. Now, the Heber process is a very important process in which uh, ammonia is produced, and ammonia is a very important. Uh, it's a very important uh, uh, chemical, which is used to make uh, fertilizers. And uh, nitric acid is also made from ammonia. A lot of detergents. A lot of explosives. It's it's so it's a it's a it's basically a raw material for many many products. So it's a very important process. So we will start discussing the Haber process, and we'll first I'll first give you the equation for the Haber process. Now the equation for the Haber process is that you have uh, you're basically reacting you're reacting nitrogen with hydrogen, three molecules of hydrogen. And you're producing two molecules of NH3, and they're all in gaseous state. You need to remember this equation. They're all in gaseous state, and the enthalpy of the forward reaction, delta H, is negative, which means that the forward reaction is exothermic, whereas the backward reaction is endothermic it's negative so it means forward reaction is exothermic and the backward reaction is endo so this is simply your reaction for the Haber process but this reaction is slightly more complicated we need to understand how this reaction would be performed at an industrial scale so uh, the conditions for those uh, uh, the first thing we need to know is where do we get these raw materials So the raw materials, which are nitrogen and hydrogen, where do we get them? Nitrogen is the most abundant place where you can find nitrogen is air. So it's obtained. It's obtained from air, and it's obtained by fra by the fractional distillation of liquid air. So it's obtained from <coughs> fractional distillation. of liquid air and we can go into a little bit detail about uh, what is meant by the fractional distillation of liquid air is uh, we will go into a little bit detail now air com is composed of uh, let's say what are the most abundant 78% uh, air is nitrogen then you have oxygen and you have plenty of other gases, but they are in very small quantities. Now the difference is that all these gases have have differing they have different boiling points. So they all have different boiling points. So what they do is, and let's make a rough diagram to explain what how this is obtained. What they do is, they have uh, they liquefy air by cooling it to let's say this is my this is a this is a container where air is compressed and it's cool and it's liquefied so you have this solution of liquid air and you have nitrogen and oxygen and many other different gases but it's mostly nitrogen and oxygen 21 percent is oxygen with 78 percent is nitrogen the boiling point of nitrogen is uh, 77 kelvins and the boiling point of oxygen is uh, 90 kelvins so uh, uh, what you do is once you have liquefied uh, once you have liquefied uh, air what you do is you start uh, heating it you start warming this mixture and when you start warming this mixture uh, since nitrogen has a lower boiling point, it starts to evaporate first. It starts to evaporate first, and what you can do is you can collect nitrogen. Uh, you can collect nitrogen first, so it starts to evaporate, and you can collect nitrogen. This is how uh, fraction distillation works, and you can then uh, cool the gases obtained again to get liquid nitrogen. So that's how nitrogen is obtained. On the other hand, you have you also have uh, you also the other raw material for the Haber process 
is it is hydrogen so the other raw material is hydrogen and we will discuss how hydrogen is obtained later when we study organic chemistry it's part of organic chemistry but the process uh, for obtaining okay but the process for obtaining hydrogen is it's called it's called cracking of oil cracking of oil or you can say uh, large chain hydrocarbons which are generally not, not very useful so large chain hydrocarbons oil is basically a mixture of different hydrocarbons so it's cracking of oil where you literally crack oil molecules and i'll just give you a brief description of what happens i'll give you a brief description uh, what what they do is that if you have a longer uh, chain hydrocarbon let's have four carbon atoms and they have all these hydrogen atoms attached to them each carbon atom makes four bonds So let's say I have this hydro, uh, I have this long chain hydrocarbon. What happens is that this, uh, when cracking is done, the molecule, the chain of the molecule, breaks at any point. Let's suppose it breaks from this point, and once it breaks, uh, let me remove that. Now this bond is gone. So let me rub that off. So now this bond is gone. So the molecule still needs to complete its bond. What it does is to complete its bond is that this carbon, these two carbon atoms, this carbon atom is not having complete bonds. It's only making three bonds. So what it would do is it's going to make it make a fourth bond with the other carbon atom at the other end. But this carbon atom now is making five bonds and carbon makes four bonds. So it gets rid of one of the hydrogens. This hydrogen is then removed. So we can rub that off as well. This hydrogen is removed. Let's say I'm rubbing that off. And the same thing, same exact thing happens at the other end. This carbon atom is making three bonds. It makes a fourth bond with the other carbon atom and it results in a double bond. And this carbon atom then has, it has five bonds. So it gets, it, it also gets rid, it rids itself of one of the hydrogen atoms. And when it does that, now the two hydrogen atoms removed from both sides. And those two hydrogen atoms are going to combine and they're going to form H2. So when you're cracking oil, you get plenty of hydrogen molecules and that's the source of hydrogen. So these are the two sources of your uh, raw materials for the Haber process. Now we're going to draw a rough diagram for the Haber process in which I'll uh, uh, we'll, uh, give you a, an example of how the power plant uh, is going to work. What, what happens is that nitrogen... nitrogen is being reacted with hydrogen let's say these are my two raw materials and this here is my and let me Color that so this is uh, the plant where nitrogen and hydrogen are reacting and they're going to produce uh, they're going to produce they're going to react and they're going to produce uh, NH3 ammonia now uh, one thing to remember about this reaction is that uh, that the yield of ammonia is very less it's very uh, this is a reversible reaction and the yield or the output of ammonia is very less it's is less than uh, it's less than probably 20% so since the yield is very less there are a lot of raw materials uh, left over raw materials there's a lot of unreacted they are unreacted 
N2 and H2 molecules in this product. So what they do is that they cool So there's a there's a cooling plant in which this mixture is cooled. So we have a cooling plant in this mixture is cooled, and NH three has uh, NH three happens. It has a high boiling point. NH three has. Uh, A high boiling point so it's a, it liquefies very quickly boiling point so it is liquefied hence uh, the uh, NST is liquefied and what they do with the rest of the leftover the un unreacted reactants is that they send those reactants back into the mixture so those reactants your unreacted reactants are sent back to and reprocessed so these are my these are my unreacted n2 and h2 and the cooling plant is where I obtain my liquefied ammonia. So liquefied ammonia is obtained from this cooling plant. Uh, now, uh, and the raw materials are again fed into this uh, power plant where the where ammonia is again produced. The ammonia is cooled, and the unreacted reactants are sent back to the plant and reprocessed. So this is a rough, very rough diagram. You don't need to actually draw diagrams. There haven't been any questions uh, related to this, so, but it's a very simple diagram. It's very easy for you to keep uh, keep this diagram in mind. What's important is that the conditions used in the Haber process, that's one very important uh, point in a lot of questions, very small questions uh, come on that particular topic. So, so we're going to do we're going to uh, discuss the conditions used. So the conditions used in the Haber process, and I'm going to write the equations back again. It's N2 plus 3H2, and it's a reversible reaction, and you get two ammonia molecules, and the forward reaction is delta H is negative. The forward reaction is exothermic. So the conditions used in this reaction are that you have uh, 200 to 1000 atmosphere pressure is used. ATM is the unit for pressure. One ATM is basically equal to one atmospheric pressure. So, uh, or 100,000 pascals. So 200 to 1000 ATM pressure is used and you have 400, 450 degrees centigrade temperature. And Fe is used as a catalyst to speed up the reaction.